So the chairman of the Joint Chiefs saying that it is not time for airstrikes in Syria yet. General Martin Dempsey saying he will not recommend attacks until there's a clear threat to the West posed by ISIS, something that he says has not happened yet, he believes. The chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee disagrees. Their uh, focus right now is establishing the caliphate, uh, but uh, don't kid yourself for a second, they aren't intent on hitting the West, and there are external operations, uh, I believe, underway. KT McFarland is a Fox News national security analyst. She was former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense in the Reagan administration. KT, good morning to good you. Morning. Uh, we just laid it out there. We're hearing one thing from, from Rogers and McCall and mm -hmm, Intel sources, mm -hmm. and suddenly uh, a change of tune over the weekend from Dempsey. Well, and it's also a change of tune because at the end of last week, you had the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Dempsey, and the Secretary of Defense making it sound imminent when the Secretary of Defense said, we've never seen anything like this. They're well-funded, they're well-armed, they're, um, they're presenting an imminent threat to the United States. So you kind of figure, well, what's what your happened story in the last couple days? And, and the thing that I think is upsetting is that one of the things that the political leaders are saying, well, it, we don't think their intentions are to attack the homeland or to attack it yet. You know, first thing you learn in national security planning, don't look at intentions. Those can change overnight. Look at capabilities. Look at motivation. Look at opportunity. And if you look at that, ISIS is in pretty good position. Why? Well, opportunity. We now know we have a southern border that's completely porous. We've heard from intelligence sources, European and American, that there are several hundred, probably several thousand European passport holders fighting in Syria and Iraq, and maybe even several hundred Americans. Those are people who can enter the United States, no question. Questions asked. The second thing we're hearing, so, th so there's an opportunity there. There's an opportunity to come to the United States. The second thing is capability. Well, we know that they're well funded. They, our leaders have told us they're well funded. We know they're well armed. And then finally, it's the motivation. The head of ISIS, um, Mr. Baghdadi, now calls himself the Caliph, he has said conflict with America is inevitable. So we know they have the motivation. They're not scared of us. They want to bring the fight to the United States. So for our planning purposes, we better assume they will. All right. So, so we had this sort of change right. of, uh, y you know, of tone coming yeah. from the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff because one day he sort of surprised everyone by saying something was imminent. Then we heard no airstrikes yet. So is there an alternative reason for that? Could it be that they are working behind the scenes to sort of build a coalition mm -hmm. and they're, they're buying some time? Or is it that the White House got on the phone and said, whoa, you need to back down on this uh, on this line of talk. Yeah, we're still golfing. We're still on the golfing mindset. Yeah. We're not on the worst footing mindset. I think it's probably a little bit of each. Um, nobody's talking about United States sending a large ground army into Iraq to refight the Iraq war, to refight like an Afghanistan-Iraq kind of war. But there is the notion that the moderate Sunni states, they look at what's happened in ISIS, with ISIS and the rapid advance, and they think, you know, it's our next on the, on the stake next. So hopefully what the administration is doing is going around to these countries, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, and saying, let us all together form a really serious anti-ISIS coalition. Let's bring the Europeans in, too, since they're, they're being threatened, as we've seen over the weekend, with more and more accusations that they're going to go back to Britain, these passport holders, and make war in Britain. So is it possible to now be forging that coalition? If that's the case, I'd like to see the Secretary of State over there doing this and not just the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. But finally, Martha, all the stuff about airstrikes, do we not, do we have them in Syria, let's talk about defending the homeland because that's where we really need to get serious, secure the border, find out who's in this country, yeah. um, because that's ultimately I mean, I really wonder what kind of effort is underway at our Department of Homeland Security to track down these passports. Mm -hmm. I mean, do we have a task force that's been put in place right. with that job as, you know, you guys do this 24 hours a day and do nothing else, figure out right. who these passports are, are being held by? Uh, I don't know. We're going to talk to the uh, Pentagon spokesman, Rear Admiral John Kirby, coming up. Some more coming up on this, Kitty. Thank you. Thank you. As always, good to have you here.